Friends, first of all, let me thank each one of these panelists who actually made to feel that AI is very simple. It is not complicated. It cannot be complicated than a CA code curriculum. And it's been very simple and subtly done with live examples every time on different aspects. Most of the time, people are thinking that the programs which are being conducted by ICI are focused on only practicing member. But this particular sessions, which we have done, were not for only practicing session, sessions, but also for the people who are working in industry, people who are decision makers, people who are business owners. They also have watched these videos and understood how simplified accounting, tax, and compliance can be. And that is a message which we try to give you all. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for giving the overview of activities of AI in ICI. And this is the first time the committee has been formed by ICI under the leadership of Daya, sir. Thanks to our President Ranjit, sir, and Charanjot Singh Ji Nanda, sir. And uh, now, the terms, every panelist will be given 10 minutes to present the use case. And five minutes will be given for the juries to throw their queries, throw their uh, questions to the panelists. And they will have to give their answer so that they can justify their use case. Uh, so, Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam, Satsrikal, Adap. Hello to everyone who are watching this webcast. Hope you and your loved ones are doing well. Let me start by thanking ICI leadership. Uh, you know, I think this is second opportunity that I am getting, you know, to present my UI AI use case, which I hope will help my friends out there. Uh, let me start with the problem statement, which, you know, I'm trying, you know, attempting to solve through AI. You know, finance function as a whole or auditors, they keep on doing some kind or the other kind of financial and operational computations. From auditors lens, if I... Uh, think, you know, it, we call it re-performing some of the FS captions so that they are comfortable on the financial state statements on which, you know, they are going to, you know, uh, you know, uh, make uh, their audit report. Now, these computations involve collating and transforming multiple data sets, which are both structured and unstructured data. By unstructured data, I mean, you know, like contracts or understanding documents, you know, or agreements, etc. And by structured document, I mean the database table, flat files, Excel, CSV, all of that. So let me, you know, uh, take you step by step how AI can help us with the, uh, with, with, uh, the financial computation piece. Let me share my screen very quickly. Okay, so this is, uh, this will give, give uh, all of you a glimpse of what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, as you can see, uh, you know, any financial computation involves, you know, four broad steps. You know, first you extract data automatically, you know, from these documents or from the databases, uh, perform data validation. Uh, then you recompute or compute if you are, you know, a finance function or operations team, then you compute for, from auditor's lens, you know, you will re-perform basically to get comfort. And finally, you know, finance function will, you know, based on these computations will generate the account entry. So this is the entire four step approach. And I'm using different uh, AI technologies here. Like for example, you know, for automated data extraction, I'm using OCR, RAG, which has been explained uh, by one of the panelists, Sunny, uh, LLMs, you know, for data validation, I, I'm using uh, a, a non-traditional uh, approach, you know, where instead of uh, giving rule-based data validation, we can just uh, use AI, you know, to and and for you know and let the AI detect the outliers from the data. Then for financial computation, I'm again using GenAI and VBA uh, for Excel. And finally for accounting entries generation, I'm using LLMs. So where we can use uh, this or who all can use this? I would say you know it has vast uh, applications. Finance function can use this. Legal and compliance team can use this. Operations team, internal audit and state audit. While today I'm going to demonstrate how we can recompute or compute in DS116, which is, uh, which is uh, something, you know, quite relevant for telecom sector and even other sectors. 
But similarly, we can perform ECL computation, you know, relevant for FS sector, brokerage comp uh, computation for asset management company, discount re-performance, payroll, revenue, and wherever, you know, we have to compute or recompute something, we can use these four-step approach. So very quickly moving on, as I said, I would demonstrate the use of NDS 116. Uh, I have, you know, these uh, sample, one second, just give me a second. I have these uh, sample three lease agreement, which I'm going to read, okay? And just to make this presentation simple, because, you know, I'm trying to explain a concept here. This is a very simple uh, lease agreement, okay? So for NDS recomputation, I need to first read this, you know? So I've already done that exercise. Uh, you know, this is perplexity, you know, similar to chat GPT. All we need to do is provide a prompt upload these, uh, you know, PDF documents, and it will extract the relevant details which you, which we would need in order to perform NDS recomputation. All we need to do is copy paste this and put it in Excel. Now, depending on how many leases you have, you have to upload those many lease agreement documents and extract these relevant details. I've also used chat GPT uh, for this. Again, you know, it gives you uh, an Excel. All you need to do is download this. But again, you know, if you are tech savvy, you know, if you know a bit of uh, Python programming, uh, we can uh, basically generate, uh, you know, uh, a script basically, which will read all of this. Again, you can make use of, this is the Python script that you see here, okay? Now in this case, uh, you know, uh, you can make use of this script and basically extract this automatically from the PDF documents. Uh, once the extraction is done, and for the sake of simplicity, I have already uh, compiled 100 lease records here. As you can see, these are 100 records. Their start date, tenure, end date, rented reception, inception, and increment percentage is what would we need it, you know, as a starting point for NDS 116 recomputation. Now I will close this file. Okay. As the next step, you know, before we perform recomputation, we need need to be absolutely sure that whatever we are going to reperform on the on the basis of data which we will use as the underlying data for recomputation is absolutely right. Okay, so for that we perform some validation checks. Now there are two kind of validation checks you can perform. Either uh, you know you basically have a rule based validation, or you can use AI here to perform validation which is step two. Now, in this case, I am using traditional AI, which is unsupervised outlier detection take technique. And for that, you know, I'm using uh, chat GPT, okay, to generate a Python script, you know, for me. So again, a very simple prompt. I'm saying, you know, I, I want an isolation for a script. So this is an unsupervised learning uh, algorithm, which will detect outlier. And I'm specifying all the necessary details. And it generates a script, which all I have to do is put it in the uh, in the uh, ID environment and just run it. When I run it, it automatically gives me the outliers from the data. As you can see, these three are outliers. And if we analyze these three records, you know, the tenure in the first case is negative. Now, this is again an exception. Now, I, I know, you know, you would be, uh, you know, wondering why would we would be running this on 100 records. But like I said, you know, computations or recomputation, we do it on millions of records or, you know, lakhs of records. So what if you have this unsupervised learning where you do not have to specify any rules and it gives you these exceptions, okay? So in this case, you know, this is negative tenure. So we can go back, check the underlying record and correct it. In the second case, you know, the tenure seems to be 99, which is fine, okay? Uh, sometimes we get into the lease, which is 99 years old. And in the third case, we can see the increment, annual increment percentage is 35, which is phenomenally high. So again, you know, all we need, I'm not saying this, this is incorrect record. All we have to do is check these underlying uh, lease agreements and whether the LLM and many panelists have highlighted uh, in, the, in, in the previous, uh, you know, uh, presentations that LLM is not 100% accurate. So it is important that we back it up by uh, these additional techniques. And finally, you know, once you have corrected these records, you will go ahead and do the NDS116 computation. Again, you know, I kept the script ready. You know, there is a big prompt that you need to write 
I am doing it using VBA, but for that, you know, I need to know VBA. Uh, while I understand VBA a bit, okay, but I cannot write that much script. So I'm using this prompt where I've specified everything what I need. Thank you, okay. last two minutes left. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. And it generates the VBA script, okay? Now for this, you know, I am using this, this Excel, which has uh, those 10 agreements, uh, you know, for the time being and their cash flows and these parameters. Okay, I will paste my VBA script in this, uh, you know, in this notebook, you know, in this window. I'll come back and run process report. And it quickly generates, voila, it generates the output. And this is something which it has computed based on those uh, cash flows. I can now take this entire dump, okay, uh, copy, and I can go back to chat GPT. And like I said, I've already done this. Generate accounting entries based on NDS 116 computation. I pasted these same values that you see here, and I ran it, and it indeed generated the accounting entries that we need to pass. Okay. Again, if I could have even uploaded the chart of accounts and it would have given us properly uh, the accounting entry, which we should have passed. So that's it from my end. Uh, and over to uh, Umesh sir and Juri. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Akash, for your uh, use case. And now I will request our juries. Thank you, Umesh. Bye. Uh, wonderful presentation, Akashi. Um, you showed how out of the data available, you could easily extract from the PDF document. You could extract the lease agreement and come out with NDS 116 reports. Uh, that was wonderful. And again, I think it goes on to show that our imagination is the limitation. Otherwise, AI can give us whatever we want provided. We have the right questions, the right prompts, etc. available. So, um, I think uh, it was a complete presentation uh, and uh, you showed us, but again, knowing certain Python, certain uh, VBA would also probably be a big help to this AI, um, uh, uh, delving into AI and getting the most out of it. Yes. What is your call on that? Sir, I absolutely agree. Uh, you know, whatever features that are available in chat GPT, Gemini, okay. Those are restricted to what their front end provides us, that UI provides us. But you know, there is something, a concept called API. So they also come up with API. So, you know, a lot of additional things you can do using their API. If you know a bit of programming, I'm not saying that, you know, we have to be expert in Python or VBA, you know, so that you know we develop tools. That is not the expectation. But even if we know a minimum of these, the basic knowledge, so that we can at least write script. And see, so this is not the actual script I had to use. I had to make some basic correction, you know, uh, for this presentation. So again, the the basic knowledge that I had in both the technologies helped me, you know, fine tune these scripts. So you are right, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Akash, what is your experience? The way you have sh uh, shown the extraction is very important element here to get the correct output, in fact. So yes. what is your of uh, how the chat GPT and other tools are performing in data extraction, whether they are full of getting that data in our image file or PDF or any Word doc or Excel in the similar way, or there are some deviation happening. Uh, so sir, uh, deviation would happen. No, it depends on the quality of the input that we provide. For example, if we, you know, give a handwritten, handwritten document, or for instance, if we give an, a scanned document, which is of pure, poor quality, okay? Now it has its own limitation because if a human being itself himself can't read, then we cannot expect AI to read it, okay? While the technology is evolving, for example, this chat GPT-4 Omni, okay, which is the, you know, best of the models, uh, you know, I believe are available out there. You know, it is becoming better and better. That's why, you know, the step two, you know, of validation was very important. We cannot rely on the sole output we are getting from LLMs. We need to back it up by data validations, okay? And I used AI only to perform the validation, but again, I'm what all I'm saying is 
We can even perform some rule-based and you know back it up by the AI-based data validation. Once we are absolutely sure, we can go ahead and use another layer of AI to compute things. Yeah, that's that's actually the point. I think the extraction and validation it can be used as a something uh, input for even forensic audit because that is something is a big sector and the professionals can leverage this uh, infrastructure facility to get the desired result for the task they have been assigned. Yes. yes, thank you, our juries. Thank you, Mayurji. Thank you, Manu Agrawalji. Thank you, Akash.